Thank you for joining me today for our Pentecost Novena. Today, our title for the Holy Spirit that we'll speak about first before our Novena prayers is the title of Advocate. And Advocate happens to be the Latin translation of the first title of the Holy Spirit, Paraclete, Parakletos in Greek. Advocatus, the Latin word, is a translation of that very Greek word. Advocate means to call to. And if you remember when we spoke about paraclete, we said that literally meant to call alongside of, to be with us, to dwell within us in whatever it is that we face in a given particular moment and experience especially hardship or trials. So this word advocate is very similar, and yet it takes on a deeper meaning, a, a legal meaning, speaking of trials. And the understanding was that in a court proceeding, of course, when charges were brought against you, you'd have somebody, an advocate, who would plead your cause. We still have this today in our legal system with attorneys and lawyers and the understanding of defense before the prosecution. But in the spiritual life, what we see is that, of course, God alone is judge. And as scripture tells us, the evil one, Satan, is truly the accuser. He's the one who brings the charge against God's chosen ones and tries to condemn us because of our sins. Jesus, of course, is the freedom, the mercy, the forgiveness of those charges brought against us, but it's truly the Holy Spirit as advocate who pleads our cause before God, who is our defense. And so we find when the evil one comes against us to condemn us and to make us feel shameful because of our sins, the Holy Spirit is the one who wants to bring us freedom, even in light of those sins. How is that? Well, the Holy Spirit does not condemn us, that's for sure. The Holy Spirit convicts us, but those two words are a world of meaning of difference apart. To condemn, again, is to kind of rub our faces in our sins, so to speak, to make us feel so shameful and hopeless and despairing because of sin. Conviction, on the other hand, which the Holy Spirit brings is to acknowledge the truth that yes, we have sinned. Yes, we've fallen short. Yes, we need a savior. We need the mercy, the forgiveness, the healing that alone Jesus in his sacrifice on the cross and his resurrection from the dead has won for us. And it's because of this, even though we are guilty because of sin, because of Jesus, we can truly be free of that sin. We can be acquitted. And God the Father's judgment on us is to see his beloved son dwelling in us through his spirit and the spirit of God enables us to be free. And so this is a wonderful understanding of the role of advocate. Really a twofold meaning. Number one, again, when we're in those trials, when we're feeling condemned because of sin, we're in the past trapped because of those sins we can invite the Holy Spirit right into that once we've repented to truly realize that we are free. Jesus has freed us from our sins and the Holy Spirit wants to bring that freedom deeper to life within us. And that's the second understanding, that we don't have to be trapped in the past because of our sins. Whenever we experience that flaring up of the past, we just invite the Holy Spirit to help us, just as we would when we're facing any type of temptation or struggle or problem or worry. This is the beautiful idea of advocate 
similar to paraclete. We invite the Holy Spirit into that very particular experience, not just in some general way, but into the very particular experience, whether temptation or whether shame or anything that the evil one is bringing against us, remembering that the Holy Spirit is our defense. He's our advocate. And so today, as we continue with our prayers, we will invoke the Holy Spirit to truly be our advocate. You'll find the prayers in the link down below. Come Holy Ghost, Creator blessed, and in our hearts take up thy rest. Come with thy grace and heavenly aid to fill the hearts which thou hast made. To fill the hearts which thou hast made. O Comforter, to thee we cry, Thou heavenly gift of God most high, Thou font of life and fire of love, and sweet anointing from above, and sweet anointing from above. Praise be to Thee, Father and Son, and Holy Spirit with them one. And may the Son on us bestow the gifts that from the Spirit flow, the gifts that from the Spirit flow. Send forth thy Spirit, and they shall be created, and now shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit do instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant us by the same Holy Spirit to know what is right and ever to rejoice in his consolation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our prayer for the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. O Lord Jesus Christ, who before ascending into heaven did promise to send the Holy Ghost to finish thy work in the souls of thy apostles and disciples, deign to grant the same Holy Spirit to me, that he may perfect in my soul the work of thy grace and thy love. Grant me the spirit of wisdom, that I may despise the perishable things of this world, and aspire only after the things that are eternal. The spirit of understanding, to enlighten my mind with the light of thy divine truth, the spirit of counsel, that I may ever choose the surest way of pleasing God and gaining heaven, the spirit of fortitude, that I may bear my cross with thee, and that I may overcome with courage all the obstacles that oppose my salvation, the spirit of knowledge, that I may know God and know myself, and grow perfect in the science of the saints, the spirit of piety, that I may find the service of God sweet and amiable, the spirit of fear, that I may be filled with a loving reverence towards God, and may dread in any way to displease him. Mark me, dear Lord, with the sign of thy true disciples, and animate me in all things with thy spirit. Amen. An act of consecration to the Holy Ghost. On my knees, before the great multitude of heavenly witnesses, I offer myself, soul and body, to thee, eternal Spirit of God. I adore the brightness of thy purity, the unerring keenness of thy justice, and the might of thy love. 
Thou art the strength and the light of my soul. In thee I live and move and am. I desire never to grieve thee by unfaithfulness to grace. And I pray with all my heart to be kept from the smallest sin against thee. Mercifully guard my every thought and grant that I may always watch for thy light and listen to thy voice and follow thy gracious inspirations. I cling to thee and give myself to thee and ask thee by thy compassion to watch over me in my weakness, holding the pierced feet of Jesus and looking at his five wounds and trusting in his precious blood and adoring his open side and stricken heart, I implore thee, adorable spirit, helper of my infirmity, so to keep me in thy grace that I may never sin against thee. Give me grace, O Holy Ghost, Spirit of the Father and the Son, to say to thee always and everywhere, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.